Welcome to our weekly three-minute therapy podcast. I'm Dr. Michael Edelstein, a clinical psychologist. My co-host is Mick Berry, a multi-talented individual, including being an expert in rational emotive behavior therapy, which is an approach to therapy that was devised by Albert Ellis in the 1950s and created a revolution in the psychotherapy movement from the old psychoanalytic type of therapy where you talk about your childhood and the origins of your problems, which according to Freud lay there, to uh, the more modern uh, rationally motivated behavior therapy, which Mick and I discuss at all these podcasts, and uh, the type of cognitive behavior therapy, which you may have, uh, you may be familiar with. And the idea in REBT is that our emotions don't, and behaviors don't come from our situations, but rather it comes from our thinking about situations. And that's a very powerful idea because if you're anxious, depressed, angry, resentful, addicted, uh, then it's not necessary to change situations to get over those emotions and behaviors, but rather change the thinking that causes those emotions and behaviors. And normally it's thinking in terms of demand, must, should, supposed to's, have to's, I can't stand it, and it's awful, and I'm no good, you're no good, and life is no good. So that pretty much covers what you would be telling yourself if you were disturbed in any way. So we teach you how to identify your demands, your musts and shoulds, which consists of I must do well and get approval or else I'm no good. You must treat me well. And if you don't, you're no good. And my life must go well. And if it doesn't, then my life is horrible. Then once you identify that, then the next approach is to question, challenge, and contradict those musts. Show yourself all musts of fictions. Unless you ran the universe, then you could control what happens. So things must be the way you want them to be. But since you don't, then jettison all your musts and demands and reinforce your preferences because our musts often start with preferences and desires, and then we escalate them into demands. So that's the basic idea. Mick, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, you said you were saying uh, psychoanalytic therapy to the more modern cognitive therapy, I would substitute more modern with realistic and effective therapy because <clears throat> psychoanalysis is a waste of time, highly ineffective, and a bunch of bunk. So rather than saying modern, because modern isn't necessarily better, I would say REBT is better because it's effective and, well, it works. So I just wanted to add that. I think that's a good addition because uh, REBT has been around so long now. It's not, it's not so modern. It's not so, so modern, <laughs> right? And a lot of and a lot of times people consider modern with better. Well, modern isn't necessarily better. Modern is not uh, necessarily an attribute. You know, it's a modern phenomenon that many people think the Earth is flat now more than before the internet. The internet. Uh, has allowed more people to start thinking the earth is flat. So that's modern, but that doesn't mean it's better. Ah, right, exactly. Good point. Yeah. So today we were going to discuss spontaneity, R-E-B-T and spontaneity. This is a subject that Mick just spontaneously came up with. So Mick, do you want to start with that? Yeah, well... The thing about spontaneity is that what is spontaneity is just doing something without a lot of thought and just launching forward. That's say that's pretty much what spontaneity is. Would you agree? Uh, yes, in theory. I don't know if that's possible because since our emotions and behaviors come from our thinking, normally our thinking is not new thinking. 
maybe if we're geniuses, our thinking may be new, but usually oh. with most people, it's not new. So in, in one sense, it may not be spontaneous, but I take your uh, definition. I think overall, it makes a lot of sense. Well, I don't think we need to get too complicated about this. It's just doing something without a lot of, without much hesitation or evaluation, just going ahead with something. I'm doing it spontaneously. I'm not hesitating. I'm just moving forward with my impulse. And yeah. REBT would actually, I think, advocate spontaneous or is it recognize the value of spontaneous behavior when somebody's being spontaneous. I think they're generally enjoying themselves in the moment of doing what they feel like doing. But REBT would also say what we feel like doing is not necessarily the best thing for us. In other words, if I have a drinking problem and my spontaneous behavior is to just go ahead and drink, that's not <laughs> good for me. So REBT would not say that spontaneity is a good thing all of the time. Sometimes it's good when our actions are self-helping, and sometimes it's bad when our actions are self-defeating. Now, as we know, human beings are capable of having spontaneous self-defeating thoughts and spontaneous self-defeating emotions. And what, RE, what I've found with REBT is that REBT tells people, encourages people to practice, to quote Uncle Albert Ellis, Practice, practice, practice. Thinking rationally, thinking in self-helping ways, reducing and eliminating our demands, and that would not be spontaneous. The ABC exercise is not acting spontaneously, but by doing the ABC exercise, the rational thinking starts to become more automatic more habitual so that we're able to be spontaneously thinking in self-helping ways rather than self-defeating ways. So REBT, like learning an instrument or learning to speak another language, it, it takes a concerted, very specific effort and attention, which is not spontaneous, to learn something well enough, in the case of REBT, to get rid of your demands, to reduce your demands, to think wanting something without demanding it, to practice, practice, practice that. So then it begins to become spontaneous. But REBT would say expecting complete spontaneity is unrealistic. We're self-defeating by nature. So that I think my experience with REBT is that I practice correcting my demands, but then I let things flow and I'm often spontaneous and often spontaneous in self-helping, non-demanding ways. However, sometimes I can be spontaneous in ways that are not helping to myself, in which case I catch that and I encourage myself not to go with the spontaneous urge, but to rip apart the demand to share Shayla should, share Shayla must, as Uncle Albert Ellis said, to find the should, find the demand, rip it apart, not be spontaneous, and then I feel better. So those are some thoughts on REBT and spontaneity. Yes, and what uh, we teach people is how to do exactly what Mick has been recommending. And uh, one thing that's not spontaneous in terms of REBT is practicing uh, questioning, identifying your demands, your I can't stand it, your awfulizing, your self downing, and question them again and again. And uh, as Mick said, practice is the most important thing to uh, way to do that. One of the ways to do it is by writing out your demands and then writing out all the reasons why they are for self-destructive. Yeah, Mick? Yeah, I, tell me what you think about this. I just had the thought because I started REBT with the problem of being very, very depressed. And I mentioned this to people that I think I was about as depressed as anybody could be. I was severely, severely depressed. And uh, 
I suppose there are some people that could exceed what I experienced. In any case, I was a difficult customer and I would say I was spontaneously depressed. I'd wake up every day and I was spontaneously depressed. Now I wake up every day and I'm spontaneously not depressed. Would you say that, that I, and I know I'm not depressed these days. Um, I know it's possible for me to become depressed, but I know what to do to avoid it. But I would say I live my life currently and have been for a long time being spontaneously not depressed. I'm curious about your take on that. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think one of the ways to enjoy your life once you've cleared away your your depression creating demands and your spontaneous uh, uh, the, the demands you have that tends to stop and block sponta spontaneity is to overcome the musts and shoulds that block that. Uh, so uh, that would be my addition to that. Yeah, Mick? I just also had the thought that anxiety, tell me what you think about this, because we're kind of spitballing here. We're being spontaneous. Um, anxiety prohibits us from being spontaneous because we're questioning our action. We're hesitant to, like, let's say I have anxiety about a crowd. I would be hesitant to, somebody invites me to go to a football game, I'd be hesitant to go rather than somebody just called me up, hey, I got tickets to a football game. It's in two hours, you wanna go? It'd be spontaneous if I said, yeah, let's go. But if I have anxiety about crowds, that's going to make it very difficult for me to spontaneously accept the invitation. Yeah, so anxiety and the must creating anxiety definitely block spontaneity. Uh, it's also important if you want to have an enjoyable life and a productive life to start with goals and objectives, things you would like to accomplish in your life and work toward those. And starting with goals and objectives normally isn't spontaneous. And we have some podcasts we've done on how to find goals if you don't have goals in your life and work toward those. And that's uh, one of the ways to help you enjoy life. Yeah, Mick? And I, tell me what you think of this. I think REBT has as its goal to help people be as spontaneously, as realistically, as spontaneous as realistically possible in self-helping ways. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, we're coming to uh, the end of this podcast. Mick, any last words? You know, I, I can't think of anything, or I'm okay. not thinking of anything. <laughs> that, that was correcting it. it. The last word would be semantic precision. Notice what I did there. I can't think of anything. No, that's not actually it. I'm not thinking of anything because I can think of other things. I just wasn't. Yeah, we could call this podcast. REBT from the beginning to the end, the last word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm uh, Dr. Michael Edelstein. I'm a clinical psychologist with a private practice. I have a website, three minute therapy.com. And my able co host is Mick Berry. Mick, what's a, a good website for you? Uh, you can find me at Mick Berry. Dot com m i c k dash b e r r y dot com. Very good, very good. I'd like to uh, thank Chris Rossini, our tech engineer. Comment below if you have thoughts about this. Give us a thumbs up if you got something out of it. Volunteer, we had a volunteer scheduled today who never showed up, but he's in India, so we can excuse him on that. And subscribe to the Three Minute Therapy podcast to do what, Mick? Yeah, and I'll amend this to strive to stay on the rational side of life.